man. So, all right. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, happy Black History Month, guys. I don't know how that's a segue, but uh, yeah, happy uh, Black History Month. And let's uh, let's tackle this guy. So whenever I start something like this, I always try to look at uh, the, the picture as a whole and, and try to notice um, just a few things that, that will help me in the process. So I, I try to look at like some negative and positive space. So when I say negative and positive space, so negative space is anything that's like black and like that doesn't really have um, any color and it, it, it's, uh, let's see, let's, let's just do it in black and white. So I'll say my positive space will be in the Y. So anything that is part of our image, that is part of um, the picture, the objects in the scene, that'll be the, the um, positive space and negative space. So like the, the this cup would be in positive space because it's one of the objects, it's one of our, it's our focal point, right? This, the, this right here, this, right? These, this is positive space, like all of this stuff right here, right? This is positive space. And even this piece right here, right? This piece right here, that's still positive space. So if we just try to kind of determine our image based on black and white, right? This is pretty much our image because as you can see, this is see-through, right? That's black, that's negative space, right? Like there's this little drawing on it or whatever, but we still got quite a bit of negative space. And if I hit X on my keyboard, it switches back and forth from my foreground color and my background color. So I'm just switching back and forth just to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if I just paint black every, wherever else, right? This is my negative space. This is space that we're not using, right? This is space that doesn't really have any, like there's smoke right here. So that could be like in the middle, but you know, if we're gonna work in binary right now, black and white, cause I'm not gonna put any gray tones. That would be like a mid-level kind of information. So I would just, you know, if this was, this is our image in black and white, right? Our, our background is all of this black stuff. And then our foreground are these elements right here, right? Just breaking your image down into just these two, two, uh, two values where well, you can start to tell a lot about the image, right? Because what, what defines our image is how our positive and negative space kind of work with each other, right? So you can tell like, I've got this little gap here there's a little gap where the cup handle is, right? There's, you know, there's there's all these little negative spaces, little negative negative areas that help us define uh, our image. So, you know, so let's let me turn that off. So I like to use that to to kind of help me um, map my drawings, and I'm looking for things like that to help me in uh, doing any of my still lives or drawings and stuff like that. So, you know, and I suggest you, if you guys aren't using pen and paper, you know, find a digital software. I'm using a little Wacom tablet. I mean, this probably cost me like 40 bucks. It's a little bamboo one, you know, something like this. And I suggest you guys getting it. Mine isn't like a fancy Cintiq or anything. And this thing, you know, it gets the job done. I had a bigger one that, you know, fell apart and I just happened to have this one on standby. And, you know, it's been good to me and I have it, really like needed you know i'm probably gonna get a better one but for anything you guys are doing i'm man this little this little guy right here like this is my phone compared to my tablet right like and my tablet screen right there's like a little box in the middle that shows you how big my drawing space is so like my drawing space is like that big right look at my phone so like all in all you don't need i'm just saying showing you just so you guys know you don't need like a cintiq to be an artist, right? You, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I need this giant, you don't need all that. That's that's extra, like you're not working at Disney, you're not a professional, right? Like get yourself a tiny little Wacom, learn on, and, and you'll be good to go, all right? So let's uh, let's get back to this. Let's get back to uh, our image and, uh, all right. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna start, like let me just draw some construction lines. So I can, I can use these as lines, so I can say from here, right, let's go here. It's gonna go takes a while for my so I mean you know if you use these lines you can kind of find out where everything is on 
on an image. So if my my cup and my mug, my teacup and my mug are, you know, like that, I can I can use these construction lines, right? I can use these use these construction lines to kind of help me determine uh, where my object is. So let's see. So you know, let's, so let's just start with this mug. Boom. You know, it's just straight lines. Actually, I'm gonna make it a new layer, so I'm not drawing on that layer. I can uh, kind of erase that later. So. Right, so I know that is where the bottom of the stem is right look at how like this is this just makes my job a little easier when I can find out where all of these landmarks are so I can boom. All right, so it goes like right there and then yeah, I think I might make it a little wider Just like that and it's not it doesn't have to be perfect perfect right now it doesn't have to be like super super perfect but you know you just want it you want something that you know, you know and I'm just using basic shapes now I'm using boxes and ovals and stuff like that and not really I'm not trying to worry about details or anything like that so this is the base and then this I'm gonna actually draw a box for uh, this handle you see why in a second I use these boxes and you know circles to kind of help um, help define what my shape is. So I'm gonna just draw draw another box right here actually. So this box is where uh, this 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 little mug right here is gonna occupy. And and I'm trying to take you guys through my thought process just so you guys understand. Okay, this is this is what he's thinking about. This is what he's this is what he's trying to achieve. This is what he's drawing. And let's let's what's this. Okay, I just messed that up. I just have to erase later so if I hit V I can shift drag and I'm just gonna drag these out a little bit more go back hit B on my keyboard uh, that brings up the brush and then uh, so I'm just boom boom All right and then we've got this as the handle and I'm using boxes right like these are just simple boxes and uh, you know, I'm not getting too crazy with the detail now. I'm just trying to put everything in its place. So like with this, this box right here, right? I like to draw through my object. So I like to draw through, right? So that I can get exactly how, uh, how it fits into the scene. I don't care if it's intersecting any other objects. That's not my that's not my problem right now. I'm not finishing the drawing. I'm trying to study the image. So I'm trying to just study this image with uh, with my line work. So I'm just trying to study what's going on. Okay, how does this relate to this? Right? These are just boxes. I'm not doing anything crazy. I haven't you know, picked a single color. I haven't done any of that, you know, the crazy stuff, or nothing crazy, just, just simple boxes, trying to build, uh, trying to build this shape up. So this guy right here, it's just another straight line. Actually, this guy kind of like goes like this across. And then this guy, let's move this guy right here. So this guy is like this this right you're studying the image you're giving yourself the best opportunity to come up with the best result for your image right and I know that this point ends about the center of this mug so like that's that's all I need to do now that I know that I'm using that relationship to help me do my drawing right like I'm not I'm not doing anything crazy this stuff isn't isn't like magic it's just you practicing you looking at the image and using the the relationship of objects to each other 
to kind of figure out what's going on in the image, right? And I've used nothing but boxes and, you know, spheres just to help give me, uh, give me the idea of it. So now, okay, it's starting to come together, right? Starting to, starting to kind of take shape. We haven't done anything but put some boxes here, but it's starting to start to, you know, take a little bit of shape. And now maybe I'll, let's add this guy right here. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring this guy it's about right here, you know, because I'm looking at this right here, right? So we've got the cookies, we've got the handle, and they make this kind of shape right here. So let me, maybe I should use white, All right? So there's this kind of negative space going on in this section, right? So what I'm gonna try to do is achieve this sort of negative space whenever I, you know what I'm saying? Like looking to the future a little bit to see, okay, that's, that's how that is and that's gonna help me uh, define this shape, so. Right, I don't care how accurate it is right now. And I don't even know if that's glass. I think that's actually a blackboard. So yeah, it's weird because it makes it still look like negative space, but I guess this could be technically positive space. But, and I think that's why they left these little white lines on there because without these white lines, that would just be like just <laughs> negative space. All right, cool, cool. Interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, so uh, with this guy, now we, you know, we're starting to cook with a little bit of gasoline, cook with a little bit of fire, right? Um, so now we can just, you know, start. Uh, let's see. So there's a technique for drawing circles on any any object you want, uh, for drawing ovals or round shapes on anything you want. But the technique is. What you want to do is you want to kind of draw a box, right? And then you want to put an X in it, right? And if you're on the line of perspective, this will help you draw in any, a circle in any per perspective. So all you would need to do then is kind of, right, meet those corners and make sure, right? So this will help you draw circles in pretty much any uh, perspective you want. So if I wanted to draw, let's see if this was like horizon line and I wanted to draw a circle right here, I would just put an X, boop, boop, and, right? So now I'm drawing that circle in perspective, right? Little techniques like this will help you guys in the long run, right, whenever you're trying to do more complicated objects. And you know, so let's, let's, let's continue this guy. So now we've got some of these guys, and I'm not even worried about these this, these secondary kind of uh, objects yet, right? I, we're worried about the big, big, big picture thing. So we're worried about the blocks. We're worried about the cups, the the backboard, or the blackboard in the back. Um, and then there's you know, look at this. There's I think there's like a little. It's like a little rolled up book and stuff in the back, but it kind of blends so well into the background from far away that I'm not even worried about it right now. So uh, let's see, to finish out this composition, yeah, I think this is this is a good start. This is a good uh, kind of base for us. So let us uh, begin to Just like that. And uh, you know, there's um, there's there's something that you guys have to think about uh, whenever you guys are drawing, and it's about your line work. And as you guys see that I'm doing this, this is not the ideal uh, way to draw a line. So if I wanted to draw a circle, I don't want to like. I don't want to start and stop a lot. So I don't want to do this because what that does is it gives your eye the illusion of movement, right? So if if you look, it looks like this circle, you're just following it this way, right? It looks like it's round. And so does this. So what you want to really do is you want a lot of your stuff to be like one full motion, 
right? That's the idea of whenever, whenever you see really good artists, really good artwork, a lot of their drawings, it's like, it's really the finished stuff. It looks like really strong lines. They're very purposeful lines, right? The lines mean something when they draw them. The, the line weight means something because depending on line weight, right, is what you see the most. So line weight affects what, what we're going to see as well. So, uh, it's, it's a thin, like imagine this thick, bold circle, right? Compared to this one, right? Which one is your eye going to get drawn to first? This tiny little circle or this big, bold, black circle right here, right? You're going to be drawn to this one, right? I can even draw them at the same size. And it's going to look like this one's more important because it's it's a darker, thicker uh, kind of line. So what you're going to, you want to keep that in mind as well is that whatever the darkest line is, is what it's going to draw people's eyes. So if you're spending all your time laboring on one line, right, you're trying to make that line perfect, right? You're just adding more graphite, adding more ink to it. I know I'm not using graphite, I'm using a <laughs> uh, Wacom pen, but if you're adding more to it, right, you're, you're, you're telling people, this is very important. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. This is what you're subconsciously telling people, but that's not what you're, you're, you're you want to do. So like even this, this is wrong. Like this, this, what I, what I just did here, I shouldn't make this line that thick in, you know, in respect to that. Right. I just did it just because I had the brush out, but here you want this because it's in the back, right? You almost want this to be the thinnest line. And then the thickest line, right? Should be the stuff up front like this stuff should be extra, extra thick because it's in your foreground and it's more important. And these are just little, you know, drawing, uh, drawing techniques that you can use for your, for your own projects, right? the idea that line thickness draws your eye. And that's why you don't want the same line weight on every single thing as well, right? You want thick and thin line. And that's why whenever you get a, a, a good Wacom, it has this kind of pressure sensitivity where, you know, the, the lighter I draw, the lighter it is. But if I start to push down, it'll start to make that ink a little, like it'll make it a little thicker. So I have, I'll have more of, let me see if I can, I'll have something more like this when it comes to a, to a shape and my, my, my pen doesn't have sensitivity, right? So like, instead of a, this is how it naturally does right here, right? You want something with pressure sensitivity. So as I'm lightly pushing on my pen, it's lightly drawing the line and the thicker and the harder I push on my line, the thicker and harder that line will be. And good artwork has a variation in line work. It's not all the same, right? So uh, that's, you know, this is just part of, uh, you know, this understanding drawing and drawing in perspective and light and shadow and little things like that, that if you went to art school, they would pound it into your head that, hey, Listen, you gotta you gotta control your line weight. You gotta control how uh, how you're 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 letting people see some of this work. So you know I would because it, as you can see already, if I if I just increase and decrease the line weight, it just gives it a little more interest, right? It just just makes this line a little more interesting and not as uniform, right? Things that are uniform kind of start to blend in with each other, right? Start to start to kind of look monotonous. Right? It doesn't it doesn't give us as much energy as something with different and varying line thickness. Right. So even if you can look look at your comic books. Like if you guys read comic books, I don't know if anybody read comic but if anybody read graphic novels, I think is what we're calling them these days, so we don't sound like dorks. But um, yeah, if you if you look at you know good graphic novels, look at the line weight they use. Like look at how varying you know they they, they do it, and it it helps kind of give you life and interest and you know things like that so it's not done haphazardly but in a way that uh it really brings life to to whatever it is that you're doing so uh, yeah remember that about line thickness and and how it affects your drawing and as you guys can see i'm drawing through this right this box goes right through this cup well that's because now i understand how this works now i understand where it ends where it begins and I can continue uh, my drawing from there. So let's, let's just let's 
Let's continue this bad boy. Uh, so let's see. So we've got this guy, and I'm not, you know, and that see, I that's one of those things is even me as an artist, like I have to get over that. Like I want my line to be like, uh, 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 uh. So no, 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 no. Just draw a circle. Be sure in your circle and keep it moving, right? This ain't, you know, it's 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 not what it's not what that is. You just draw your line and call it a day. So you know, if you can do it in one motion, two motions, so you know. Uh, it the better because it just looks much much more uh, much much more natural much cooler much you know, much better so All right and a way to practice that um, to practice just drawing complete circles instead of right the, try to draw a circle right now and see if you don't do something like this right right this don't do that don't do that you want something that's all right just boom all right and you might want to practice that for a while all right just drawing circles drawing circles you, you know this is you know, like anything you want to do if you want to get better you just got to practice it right now you want to you know you don't want to labor you know I'm trying to I'm trying to draw I'm trying to draw a circle but it takes me 30,000 hash marks to that's that's useless right don't all right so these little kind of habits right you want to train yourself out of it and you you're not going to admit it now but if you look at how you draw and if you look at your artwork you'll see very etchy lines and they it's like a, it's a sign of uh immaturity in in your drawing not like you're an immature, immature person but your, your drawings and your you're not confident in yourself is what it looks like it looks like oh my god I want to make sure you know it just it doesn't project confidence in your drawing and and you want to project project that confidence that I know what I'm doing you you know you can hire me for this job and I will I'll, I'll get the lines right the first time and I don't need to you know I don't need to do this over and over again so uh, let's see and then this guy kind of comes out in perspective a little bit, but you can't tell the difference. So, you know, and I'm like I said, I'm drawing a box. And I'm using my box as a guide, right? Like it, it just comes, it comes in clutch. Boxes are just awesome, right? They can do anything. <laughs> uh, so. And then like that. Just and then let's do the liquid so the liquid is kind of we can see it all right uh, like that top of the cup all right and this liquid's kind of wavy it's got all these cool little bubbles in there okay so the back side of the glass kind of why to go forward? No, oh, that's not what it does. Oh, Shift Control Z. Oh, it's not. I thought it was 3ds Max. Control Y is move forward. Okay, it's Shift Control Z to go. All right, good to know. All right. So now let's see. Uh, let's just. Boop. Mm, the liquid comes up pretty far, so let's just draw a line to see where the liquid comes up. Right, right there. All right, good to know. All right, using the image as a reference is not cheating. <laughs> it's just helping you get a better still life. All right. so it's got a lot of bubbles in there, but we're not going to worry about that. Bubbles are the least of our worries right now. Got our handles in, we've got our little things in, we got our box in, right? And then, you know, we can start adding some secondary detail, like the like this these papers in the back. So, and like I said before, remember, right? If you draw through this stuff, it's just gonna work so much better for you because, right? Because now I know, okay, this has to go through here. There's a lot, so boop. Just like that. Right, I can match. Right, I can match. Uh, and it looks like this piece of paper goes under this. Right, so 
that's the beauty of drawing through this. So it looks like they just shoved it under here. So I'm just, like I said, drawing straight through the drawing. I don't care. It's about construction, right? It's about how we construct this stuff. And then, so the paper kind of bends off the table a little bit, but we're not going to show that yet. I'm just going to Probably a little too far. Nah, I like the way it broke the silhouette. Kind of like that. So it's it's not like, and I think the idea for that I'm trying to get across to you guys isn't you're trying to copy it like a hundred percent. You're trying to understand the image. You're trying to break it down into what makes up this image. What makes this image you know the image right you're trying to find those elements to it and you're you're constructing it so it's more of a learning process than a replication process and i and i think i that's the problem with a lot of people is they think my job is to try to imitate this image a hundred percent no 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 your idea when i'm giving you these assignments is to learn about learn what's going on in the image learn how the image is put together and then you can put your own together whenever you get in those situations. You know how these objects relate to each other. And you can use that to make yourself a better artist and get better drawings in general. Right? And that's the point of this. If you know the, the point of this, you know, isn't I'm not trying to make you a fine artist. No. That's you know, there there's a there are plenty of people who do that and they do it really well. And that's what you want to do. This probably isn't the tutorial for that. What I'm teaching you to do is to analyze images, analyze pictures, and try to understand what's making them what. Because I'm not, I'm not the best artist, right? Like I'm, you know, I I just understand how these objects are together, and I work in 3D, so I can place those images where they need to be. I can place the box where it needs to be. I can amalgamate what's going on, and then give you something back that looks, you know. Like I'm okay. He's he's trying to draw this picture, you know. And what students will, will do, which is kind of funny, is they they draw a lot of silhouette, right? So I'll get a drawing, or you know, if somebody I say recreate this. This is what they'll do. They'll essentially do this. They'll do okay. So I see this, all right, and then they'll draw a silhouette of the cup, and then they'll do this, and then something like that, all right. And they're, they're work, they work primarily in silhouettes, right? They don't have any idea of drawing through. So their, their drawings usually end up looking very flat because of that, right? The reason your drawings are going to look flat is because you're not really giving it any dimension, right? If all I'm doing is drawing silhouettes of objects, right? You can tell that it's a cup that I'm drawing, right? If, you know... You can tell it's a cup or something, but how do I know it's a cup without giving it like true, you know, depth, right? These little tricks allow the eye to kind of perceive those, those, that depth, even though it's not really there, even though we're drawing it on, on, on a piece of paper, right? We're trying to give the viewer the illusion that this object has depth. It has I can reach in this cup. I can I can put my hand and if I dip my hand and finger in that cup, my finger would go inside and there'll be water. Right? The problem is when I see students, their stuff be looking flat, right? Like I'm like, what what, what are you doing? You didn't give it any depth. This it doesn't feel real. And they're like, ah, oh, it just doesn't feel. no no no. Break it down. Go simpler, right? And you will start to see the results that I'm talking about. All right? Does anybody have any questions so far about uh, what I'm going through? No questions? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so yeah, let's let's continue this and um, yeah, let's just break this down. And you guys can see like, I'm not erasing any of this line work. Some of this line work is actually kind of cool from like, from a, from somebody who's learning perspective. and. Whenever an artist shows you their line work, you should definitely appreciate it because this is how they built the image. This is how they structure it. So if you go online and, you know, some, a lot of artists, you know, 
they'll leave their under drawings in. So let's see if we can find some Da Vinci drawings. Not a Da Vinci Resolve, that's a editing program. So let's see. Some some of this stuff has some good good line work. Alright, so like you can see some of their thought processes as to how they were trying to approach the animal, right? How they were trying to approach the line and how they were trying to approach so this is like this is beautiful, like this is study material right here. This is what you go back and look through and you go, okay. Ooh, what was he doing there? Or how was he trying to approach that? And, you know, you can really see through an artist's thought process based on their, you know, their drawings. And even when you look at this one, let me see if I can find a giant image of it. Right, like. So like you can see where he's using this these lines to kind of help him figure out where all of these positions are, right? Like so we all need guides, right? Even the the best of the best, they use guides. So why shouldn't you, right? Like why why shouldn't you be be somebody who uses a graph or uses a chart or uses the actual to to line it up and make sure it's right it's a tool there for you to use and it's only going to make you uh, a better artist right like you know you can look through you can see all of the extra line work like the underlying drawing and in, in, in a lot of his work the thought process right little things like that when you leave it in man it, it looks really cool sometimes you know and it kind of gives you an idea of what the artist was thinking so um yeah uh little cool stuff like this and and you know uh it'll it'll definitely help uh you guys do uh better drawing so let's get back to let's get back to this guy all right it's already one o'clock and i kind of want to wrap this up um so that you guys uh can can get to it and start working on uh stuff i'm gonna open up 3ds max i'm gonna do this like five minutes five more minutes and then wrap this up so we can jump inside of 3ds max for uh for the demo all right all right so let's look at this guy right here so now we've got this guy boom like that we haven't even dealt with light and shadow yet, right? We have, we're not dealing with how light and shadow affect it. So now let's look at this little piece of paper and how it affects uh, this guy right here. So it's kind of about the top right there. So yeah, it's, like, it's like in the center of this line closer to the top. So I'm just, right, I'm just, boom. Just throwing it in there. Not even, not even second guessing it, third guessing, just Come on, let's go. And I might even increase the brush size since it's kind of forward, and you know, bring him, bring him a little bit of, a little bit of love back here. And so it's like a folded piece of paper, right? So now we're just addressing everything, and as you guys can see, this is what I talk about when I talk about draw through. I'm drawing through all of my objects. I'm building on top of them. I'm imagining that I can see through this stuff to see the underlying structure, right? That's the idea of drawing through your work as well, right? You you want to draw, it just, it just gives it depth and you'll understand the image better, all right? So I feel like I'm gonna harp on that a lot and you guys are gonna get tired of me saying it and you guys are gonna, you know, like this guy in this, this uh, this death stuff, man. He's trying to kill us. So uh, let's let's you know this these cookies. I'm just gonna use a box to represent the cookies because I don't want to have to deal with them right now. Right? Look at that. Look at these. Look at these beautiful cookies I just baked on this uh, Photoshop plane. These little boxy cookies. So so this this cookie is like right under this top. See, like I was gonna put it down here. I would be wrong. Look at where it is in relation to the, the this box, right? It's right here. It's back here, right? So like that's 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 the idea. Is 
studying the image, looking at, looking back and forth. Don't look at it once and then think you've memorized the image. So, right. so let's see. I'm just gonna use a box still, just a just a box. Cookie number one. Cookie number two. Right, these are boxes, not even doing nothing, just boxes, little boxes. All right, uh, let's see, this here is our pencil. It kind of comes through like so. It's kind of weird placement. So you got a pencil like that. And then we got another one like so. And if I, in Photoshop, if I want to draw a straight line, I just you know click here. If I hold down Shift, right, it'll draw a straight line for me. So I don't even have to worry about that, right? Like this, you guys have it so easy now, right? So that's as easy as it is to draw a straight line in Floaty Shop. All right, so we're putting some of these pencils in. All right, and there's some right here. Cookies are behind the pencil. Let's actually use this line to den denote the pencils, and I can just erase it after. Erase the center. All right. So then, use a piece of paper. Yeah, it's a piece, of, piece of paper on the floor. And then we've got these little books things back here. Okay. And then let's see, we got T, and then a wave sign. Or a sine wave, not a wave sign. A sine wave is what it looks like. I don't know if it is a sine wave, but then you're trying to find the distance between this point and this slope. If you guys have taken any rudimentary math, I think that's what they're doing here. But um, yeah, so something like that, and then um, yeah. So I don't expect you guys to do like. Da Vinci and no, 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 I'm not expecting. I'm expecting you just to study the image and you know we got some smoke. And that's it. Like this is this is you know, this is a good this is a good still life. If you guys spend the amount of time that I just did on this, an hour studying it, looking at it, and trying to figure it out, this is this is good. This is good for me, right? Because I know what you're doing. You're you're studying the image. You're trying to figure out what's going on there, right? And then we can see, like, look at that. Remember our uh, it's our negative space right here, right? I'm trying to match that negative space, right? That negative space. All right, so that's the that's the demo. That's the demo for uh, the day. I will post this up on the YouTube as well. I'm gonna do all the videos that we did this week. I'm gonna post them up so the cloud orientation should already be up on there. Um, and yeah, um, that's it. Does anybody have any questions before I wrap this all up?
No, not yet. I'm doing all that today. I'm going to do all that today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, if we've got no other questions, we can move on to the next uh, part of class.